Okay, so uh, We Are Dami is a project that we made back in England where we all studied together. So we've been friends for a really long time. And yeah, it's been like three, four years we've been making music. We kind of created our own style and now we're here and we're uh, going to try and do our best in Eurovision. And um, yeah, just we just want to reach out with our music to a broader audience and hopefully make people vibe with our music. So mm, we've seen a bit of Eurovision. Obviously, me and Casper being from Norway, we have a long history with watching Eurovision and we see the opportunities you can get to reach out to a new audience and just not be inside the country you live in, but also reach out to more people. And it's a really big production as well, so it's cool to see what else we can do with, uh, with our stage show, with the opportunities we can get there. So that's, uh, that's yeah. one big reason for me, at least. Casper, do you want to add anything? Yeah, no, it sounds really <laughs> fun. Of course, you can be on stage, you can... Uh, Small, what Ben is saying as well, you can experiment a bit more. Um, it's not the usual gig that we usually do. It's something else, it's like one song, and you have to make that one song really good and perform it really well. It goes into so much more planning and organization because, of course, it is a super big production. Mm. Um, so I started music at around six. I started with playing the flute. So. Uh, that was my thing. Then I started singing. Then I did the classic, like, went into choir. You know, the little diva child that I was. And then I just kind of knew, like, from a young age, it was just, like, what I wanted to do. It was, like, my passion. Got into songwriting, got really into that. And went to uni in England, in Leeds. Represent Leeds, yeah. Um, and then that's where I met these guys. My, as of now, best friends. And that's how we, uh, yeah. Made the, made the project happen. You guys can do your own story there. Yeah, for me, it started when I started quite late to play. I play piano and I uh, started when I was 11, I think, 10, 11. And I just wanted to learn all like, I was massively into Muse back then. So I wanted to learn like all Muse songs on piano. So I just like went on YouTube and like how to play Muse something on piano. And that's how it started. So uh, from there, I uh, played music around in Norway and went to like music school there. And then uh, I met Casper at uh, like a folk high school, which is like a one year school in Norway. And then after that, we decided to apply to Leeds College of Music. And uh, we both did uh, jazz. Uh, so I did jazz piano there and Casper did jazz guitar. So it's uh, quite far away from what we're doing now for sure. But uh, yeah, that's the base of uh, my playing at least. Yeah, uh, so I started really young um, and then I started listening to a lot of ACTs. So I guess I started being a bit rebellious. Hmm. I was originally playing loads of football, but then was either the band or running on the pitch for many hours. <laughs> uh, of course, I chose the band. Not sure if that was <laughs> too good now. No, what? <laughs> no, 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 of course. Uh, I've seen um, you play football. Okay, so yeah, continue. It, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, so I started really young. Um, play guitar, of course. Wanted to get the ladies. What? The <laughs> no. Wanted to get no. the ladies. No, so I, but I started a band really early and we played Metallica covers a lot. Nice. And then, yeah, no, big Metallica fan when I was younger. Of course, and then, yeah, no, it started developing into something I wanted to do as a career. Um, started studying it, um, went to Leeds as well with these guys, and uh, yeah, it just keeps evolving. Uh, for this song specifically, we wrote it at the songwriting camp here in uh, Czech Republic. We wrote it with a Norwegian producer called Einar and an uh, English singing songwriter called Abby. And uh, for this song specifically, we definitely started with the melody line in the synth in the beginning. And that was just the base of the song. And after that, we started to add some top lines, melodies. And uh, I guess uh, you and Abby were just sitting there, like, yeah. scooping out lyrics for the scooping most of the time. Lyrics. Like, well, we were, uh, yeah. me and Aina were just trying to get the base of the song down and uh, mm. get, like, some cool bass lines going. And 
Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, initially came up with like the idea of what I wanted the song to be about, and then with Abby, she's like a lyric master. Um, she just like threw out lyrics, and then um, we kind of worked on the lyrics together. We like molded them together, but definitely have to give credit to Abby. She's um, she's amazing. Uh, she's somewhere in oh my gosh Essex right now. Sorry. 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 <laughs> great accent. So shout out to Abby. She's a great, a great songwriter. Yeah. It was actually a song that we wrote like really quickly compared to the other songs because I think like uh, as like musicians that went through like education, you kind of like delve way too deep sometimes into the music, and you're like, no, it has to be perfect, and and it has to like have like check all the boxes. But this time, it just kind of was like, let's just see what happens, and we kind of wrote the base of the song like the skeleton. I think within like what three hours, which is um, quite quick. And that's kind of the song which you think like, okay, either it's gonna be complete crap, or it's gonna be something awesome. And it ended up being something that we actually uh, wanted to go forward with in Eurovision. And yeah, hopefully people are gonna like it. Casper, do you want to start? Because we just spoke. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe the after parties. <laughs> well, that's what the joy or the which no, one no, is that that's though? That's definitely oh. the biggest fear, yeah. isn't it? No, the no, fear. the biggest joy. No, it, of course it would more. Uh, it would be on being on that biggest stage and um, <clears throat> knowing that there are so many different countries, different cultures that is actually watching it. And um, yeah, of course, it would by far be the biggest gig. Uh, of course. Have no, it's around 200 million people watching it. Uh, yeah. So of course, it would be really scary feeling that many people looking at you, but it's also just preparing for it. And uh, no, I think it would smash it. Yeah. Is it? Can I go? Okay, so uh, the sorry, way too excited. <laughs> um, so I guess the biggest joy would be definitely just like meeting a bunch of talented people. Is just always sick. I feel like the energy is going to be really, really good. Um, uh, but also, I feel like there's going to be a lot of stressful energy. So that's probably the downfall. Um, yeah, we never played a gig this big. It's also been a while since we've been able to properly play. I'm not sure how it's looking this year. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess the joy is just, like, just to play in front of people. It's going to be sick, yeah. I would say that was because we're, like, really close friends. I think that's, like, the best part. Like, we even used to live together. We went through lockdown together. And if we didn't kill each other, then, then we won't kill each other now. <laughs> so I think that really showed, like, the bond. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So that's our combined superpower, friendship. Friendship. <laughs> is that cliche? Yeah, it's cliche as hell. That's great. No, I think that's nice. Like, uh, yeah, we just, uh, we don't BS with each other, you know? We no, just say how it is. We were able to play Monopoly we're, during lockdown. Oh my so gosh. that tells yeah. a lot. Yeah, Without killing each other, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Monopoly was the true test. Mm -hmm. And we are definitely good friends. Well, we've obviously seen Eurovision before, and we know that choreography can be a big part of, like, the live performances. and. Us, we've never like whenever we play gigs, we just play them and just do as it comes. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely we tried to have a, a, like a bit more approach here since it's going to be filmed and like people are going to be watching it. So we tried to like plan out some things. So you could see me and Casper doing like one dance move all the time at least. But like yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty much for us. But for <laughs> Dummy, we tried to like write out like what are you singing now? What is this about? What do you want to do on stage when you do this? So mm -hmm. we tried to. Plan it out a bit, but I'm not sure if it uh, all came out in the moment because I was fully just focusing on myself up there. So yeah, um, I, I just kind of like as a band, we just kind of try to like vibe off of each other. We're not um, a band that has like specific steps or anything. We kind of like the more like natural approach, um, just like have fun. And then I guess I have maybe a little bit of a alter ego because usually I'm more of like a goofy like tee person, but I guess in the video you'll see maybe a little bit more like sass, which is uh, obviously a part of me, it's not fake. Um, so yeah, a little bit more attitude, because I think the song deserves that. Okay, so uh, one of my favorite singer-songwriters is Julia Michaels. I think she's amazing. Listen to her, especially if you are really into like pop, good songwriting she is like a legend i think like this kind of generation like she's quite young i think she's in her 20s and i mean i guess it kind of suits what's been going on in the world and uh it's a duet with her boyfriend and it's called if the world was ending if the world was ending it's like my favorite single um we've uh done a 
Yeah, we've definitely sung that song in our house many times, but I'm still not tired of it. So Julia Michaels, If the World Was Ending. Yeah, I'd say Scandinavian music has always been like, yeah, in my heart for sure. So Scandinavian pop nowadays is something I listen a lot to. So if I have to name one, I would say Emilia Nicola, which is like Scandinavian electro pop. And she's just insane. So definitely check out Emilia Nicola. Um, I've been digging deep into film music lately. <laughs> uh, nice. So I would definitely suggest uh, watching Interstellar by Hans Zimmer nice. and just listening to the music and actually just turn off the movie and just listen to the music. Okay, so I think we're gonna bring a lot of energy, kind of uh, show our personalities, be real with you guys. Um, hopefully, the song will get you dancing. I, I think that'll be difficult with like the beat and all that it's like bringing. And yeah, hopefully uh, you'll also feel the message. Maybe it'll say something to you personally, and uh, hope that you just like it overall because uh, we think it's a nice message, and I think it's a song that will get you ready for like a night out or something. <laughs> 